Hello, hello, hello. It's Nits for Sanity and welcome to my WIP and Chat. WIP stands for work in progress. So grab whatever project, hobby, craft, chore, maybe exercise that it is that you are doing right now and let me chat with you for a while. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you stick around. And if you are one of my longtime subscribers, I am so happy to have you back. Really, truly. All right, so what am I working on today? Um, actually, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot that I kind of need to talk about with this particular situation. Uh, first, I'm going to go over my accessories. I've not discussed my accessories for a while because I kind of keep using the same accessories, but this episode I will talk about my accessories because um, I do have a couple of different ones out. So first, my cover minder. Isn't she darling? I think her name is Jessie. Anyway, this is from Moni Paints with Diamonds. Super duper cute. She was a limited edition, so she probably is not available anymore, but I will still link to Moni's website and you can go check her out. She makes just the cutest cover minders. Absolutely adorable. My putty that I'm using is from Mary over at Mary Making Crafts. It is her Mary Mud. This is strawberries and champagne. This was, I think, like a Valentine's Day special. Um, it's not my most favorite scent from her, but it it is one of my favorites. I wasn't sure what I'd think of it, but I actually really, really love it. My absolute favorite from her is Spring Rain. Oh, I love this one so much. Um, really, they all are quite lovely. So that is the putty that I'm using. And I, for the most part, use putty mostly just in my multi-placer tips. Um, my single placers are usually, um, uh, what are they called? Glue dots. <laughs> usually glue dots or just plain wax. And right now I just have some blue wax that I have been using in my tip. Then my tray... I did an unboxing for just recently. This is from Bella Art Day Nicole. And I love it because it's green and it sparkles. And I love all things green and sparkly. All right. And now my painting. My painting, I do need to spend just a couple minutes kind of discussing with you. So in my last whip and chat, I mentioned that Liz Harrison with Scotty Dog Crafts is doing an event this month. It's just meant to be a small event. Um... She is offering a few prizes herself, but you know, it's not, it's not like a big, huge event. It's just meant to be fun and a way to work through what for a lot of people would be probably a lot of their stash paintings. And that is her hashtag 30 by 40 DP along. And that is 30 by 40 is centimeters. And a lot of diamond paintings are a 30 by 40 size. Well, <laughs> I happen to only have two 30 by 40 kits in my stash. And out of those two, one of them is this one, which was gifted to me by a friend at Christmas. Um, and I talked about briefly how I wasn't sure how I was going to go about doing this because I was 98% certain that this is a stolen image. But a few things that I wanted to kind of keep in mind in here. The first one is my friend did not actually purchase this from a retailer. She actually found it at a secondhand store. So her purchase in no way went to like add additional profit to somebody who had stolen the art. Not that that's a great justification, but it is something worth mentioning um, second, my friend who is not a diamond painter knows nothing about this industry at all or, or art in general. Um, she didn't know her intentions were completely pure, blameless, and she is at no fault at all. Third, I was able to figure out who the artist of this is and I am actually going to link you to a website where you can check out all of our art. And if you feel so inclined, there are a number of different products that you're able to purchase that do feature her art. So the artist for this piece is named Janine Riley. And the piece that this is is actually called Confetti. 
Um, so I'm going to have all of that linked in my notes below. So you can actually still go check out the artist and admire what she has done and what she is doing in her craft. Finally, I have not worked on a, uh, I don't, I don't know how to phrase this without just sounding like really, really arrogant because it's not, oh, that's not what I mean. Um, oh, I haven't really worked on a like good, uh, I don't know how to say it guys without just kind of coming out and saying it. I haven't really done a cheap kit. <laughs> Um, not since I had first started diamond painting back in 2019 and realized last year that the reason why I quit the first time around is really because my product was really of inferior quality. And again, I don't, you know, keep in mind that the artist, I don't think condoned the use of her image. My friend knows nothing about diamond painting. Um, and I am not showing you there is like a, a a brand, if you will, like I can, I can see who the seller was of this at some point in the past, which I think was quite a while ago. I mean, my friend found this at least six months ago already in a secondhand store. Um, but it is definitely a lower quality kit. And I was kind of curious to see how that would go now that I have been diamond painting for a while and I'm definitely pretty experienced in this craft. I kind of really wanted to experience doing one of these lower quality kits. So that is a very long synopsis of, hey, what is my current whip? <laughs> well, now you know, it was really kind of long. So anyway, this is for the event. It's hashtag 30 by 40 DP along. You are welcome to join. It runs all month long. Um... So that's fine if you did not begin right on April 1st. I did not. I had a different project that I wanted to finish before I began this one. My guess is this will be the only painting that I end up doing. I only had two paintings that qualify, and I think this will be the only one that I'll end up getting done. I have other stuff that I want to work on, need to work on, but I did want to do it. I love Liz Harrison. Her channel is fantastic. Go check her out. She's right at like that 1,000 subscriber mark. So she could really use that boost. So definitely please go check her out. And if you feel so inclined, please subscribe to her channel. I know she would be thrilled. All right. So now to start working. Um, there is a lot of background noise tonight. First, we actually had a gorgeous, gorgeous day here. I mean, just stunningly beautiful. We don't have flowers or anything yet. It's still a little bit too early for us to have those kinds of things. But the sun was out. The temperature was amazing. Well into the 60s. Uh, just a gorgeous day. So all of our windows are open. And in case you don't know, if you are new, we I live in the woods <laughs> with ponds. And so the spring peepers are, oh, they are singing their song tonight. Their mating call is loud and strong, loud and proud tonight. Let's let's just put it that way. So you might hear some spring peepers in the background. Like I said, our windows are all open. You might hear some snoring in the background. No, that is not my husband. That is my bulldog. He is not actually in my little office nook or the stink nook, which is what it becomes when he's back here. He's um, sleeping just like a couple feet outside of my stink nook. Um, but he is very loud. He is a bulldog and bulldogs snore and are gassy. And yes, he's busy doing all of that stuff just a few feet away from me. <laughs> so you might hear him. My husband has a little bit of kitchen cleaning that he's doing right now. So you might hear some water running occasionally. Uh, you know, if you are new, we live in a teeny tiny little house. There is not really any like free space in here. I have a little corner <laughs> of a room that I use off from the living room and that's where I do all of my work. So 
Um, I have kids coming and going. They recently went to bed, so you'll probably hear some doors open. You might hear an occasional mom. Um, yeah, so it, it could be a very eventful whip and chat. However, I really, really wanted to make sure that I got one in. I did not do one last week because last week I... This might be like way TMI for you, but last week was Shark Week and it was bad. It is the worst week I have had in several months. It was really, really bad. Like the last couple months, it really wasn't that bad. And I thought, oh, good. I'm, you know, this is, I mean, a couple of, you know, not great days, but that, you know, that's normal. If you're a woman, you understand, you know, it's like that, that's normal. A couple days are usually relatively crappy, but it was, you know, it was manageable for the most part. I was able to carry on with life like normal, but last week, oh, last week was horrendous. Um, and I kind of had a feeling that it was maybe going to be bad when <laughs> one night last week, uh, I was really PMSing, which for me, quite often that means that I kind of go off on like these irrational rants. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned it before, you know, there's just, there's something that is just really, really bothering me. And it usually in the grand scheme is really something quite minor. Like it's not actually the end of the world, but for whatever reason, it's, you know, this one little thing that is just driving me absolutely nuts. And there is, there is no appeasing me. There is no fixing this. Like the world is trash because of this one minor issue and I just like start piling on everything that is wrong about this particular thing um I can't even remember what it was that I was going on about one night last week but I tend to do this and like the whole time that I am like just ranting and going on about these you know grave injustices which really are not um but the whole time I'm doing it I know that I'm being ridiculous. Like I, I know it. I logically in my head know it, but I cannot stop. Like once I get going, I am a freight train, baby. I just, whew, I just plow right ahead. Um, so I kind of got a little suspicious when I was hit really hard with that earlier in the week last week. Um, so yeah, uh, but you know, I'm here now. Life seems to be a little bit better. Um, what number am I on? Oh, there we go. Seven. Do we have any number sevens in here? Yeah, hold on. Pause. This, uh, canvas is definitely lower quality. The confetti is ridiculous. I am not holding out much hope for having, like, a really fantastic finish to this. I would love to be wrong. I would, you know, love to see 742 is here. Okay. I know I'd love to see a great finish for this, but I'm not, I'm not too terribly hopeful. Um, so anyway, I did not get to do one last week. Then, believe it or not, I tried doing a whip and chat earlier today, but that ended up being, that didn't work. I had, it, oh, <laughs> I'm not even going to go into it. So I didn't get it done earlier today. So after the kids went to bed tonight, I said, that's it. I'm just going to do this whip and chat. I understand that there's going to be background noise. You guys are just going to have to deal with it. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> so it has been like two weeks, just over two weeks since I last checked in with all of you. Last time I had a whip and chat, it was just the very, very start of our spring break. Spring break went really well. Uh, Wednesday of that week was actually my husband's 40th birthday. So he's an old man now. Um, he, not really, but <laughs> he kind of thinks that he is. Um, <laughs> and it was a really nice day. He actually took the day off from work. We went to the library as an entire family, including my oldest. There was some guy there from the other side of the state with some exotic animals. You know, rescues, typically abandoned pets that can't be put in the wild anymore. So he was there with a little presentation with his animals. My younger two were totally into it. My oldest actually sat 
for a little while and watched some of the presentation with us. And my middle daughter, she just sat in the library and read the entire time, which is exactly what I thought she would do. And that's mostly what my oldest did too. But my younger two really, really loved it. They got to pet most of the animals when the guy was done with his like educational part of the presentation. And they thought that was great. I I enjoyed his educational part of his presentation. I thought it was, you know, well done. But when he was done with that, I got out of there. Because that's when like everyone got up and started milling around. And there were way too many people. It was just way too many people. So that's when I left. <laughs> but it was really, it was really nice. And then that evening... We went out for dinner and oh, there are a couple of A's in here. Uh, my husband picked the restaurant. It's a German style brewery. They kind of are try to mimic like there's an indoor beer garden on one half, but it was way too cold to eat out there. I mean, like, it's, like, indoor and closed, and they have, like, space heaters, but it was, it was a little chilly for that. So, we were in the restaurant part of it. I enjoy going there. It is very, it's pretty heavy, heavily southwestern Germany inspired, which is where I had studied in college. So, I like going there. The food is actually quite well done. It tastes very much like the region. Um... A lot of worst, so much worst, <laughs> which is about all that I ate for two months of my life was worst. <laughs> uh, but, but my middle daughter, who I talked about in my last whip and chat, and who is now standing right <laughs> here. Like I said, there would be distractions here. Veda, while you're standing there eavesdropping <laughs> with her oldest sister too, mind you. Veda, yeah. what is the one thing that your future husband is going to have to be able to make for you? Suvlaki. Suvlaki. Yes, he has to be able to make suvlaki. Or he's getting kicked out. Or he's getting kicked out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. She just agreed. Yes. He must be able to make you souvlaki, right? Yeah. What did you eat for daddy's Suvlaki. birthday dinner? What was it? Souvlaki. Souvlaki. Was it good? Yeah. Yeah, it was good, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, so she probably yeah, enjoyed know, ate... the birthday dinner the most. My oldest now wants to tell you what she ate. Yes, you may share. You got to come over here, though. Oh, I have to real, I'll have to talk realish. Not super loud, but. Oh, I yell. What did you eat? I ate salmon. You had sa Oh, that's right. You did have salmon, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. So I guess that's more of a northern German thing. I forgot my about that. My mom doesn't like the salmon soup my dad makes, which is really, really good. But It's disgusting. Salmon should not be in soup. That It's just wrong. It's so good. It's horrible. You put dill in it and some no. heavy whipping cream. It's and it's, it's nasty and amazing. you need to go to bed now. I have to, you know, get ready for bed. You go are ready. Bed. You're in pajamas. You've showered. Go to bed. Mom, love you, say good morning. Good night, dear. I love you too. My husband makes this salmon soup. I think it's horrible. Veda, daughter number two, thinks it's horrible. But daughters one and three think it's fantastic. And my husband loves it too. It is so Your gross. My son likes it. My son says he likes it. I don't know if he really likes it. It's disgusting. Anyway, they like to eat it when Veda and I are gone for like extended wrestling tournaments. But we now... get mad when we don't. Now they are very disappointed because Veda is not able to go to... A wrestling camp in June that she normally gets to attend. So that is a missed opportunity for salmon soup and they are not pleased but we can't afford for that wrestling camp in June so she can't go and they're not allowed to make it when we're home because the whole house stinks when they make it. Oh I don't even 
like hate fish. Like I will eat fish. I just need to eat it somewhere else. Like I can't have it cooking in my living facility. Um, or at least not a house this tiny. <laughs> but this salmon soup really is not good. I am not impressed with the salmon soup. And I, I keep talking because this is a horrible, horrible diamond painting to try and do while talking because of the confetti. And then the other thing that's weird with this too, um, as you can see, I'll actually hold it up for you. Um, see, it's all these bright white circles which I guess makes it legible but then that's what will occasionally show from behind the drills too so then you have this you know little white bit showing from behind a drill sometimes I, I'm not I'm not overly impressed let's just leave it with that you know we're just going to jump up to a letter that I see a lot of that's what we're going to do because that will make it easier for me uh, so anyway, what was, oh yeah, so souvlaki, um, the rest, oh, and then the other, otherwise the spring break week, la two weeks ago, was pretty low-key, um, the kids ended up not really getting together with any friends, the kind of exception to that is Thursday of that week, a film slash documentary came out that was all about Veda's first female wrestler hero. Uh, she was the 2016 Olympic gold medalist, Helen Maroulis, and Chris Pratt, who you probably know Chris Pratt. He also wrestled in high school and he really actually was not half bad, like third or fifth in the state in high school. But I guess he had approached her about doing this film chronicling her <coughs> excuse me her kind of her comeback story you know so she she got gold in 2016 first U.S. female wrestler to get gold um and she was kind of on top of the world and then following that she sustained a very very severe concussion and in combination with this concussion there was really some very bad coaching that had happened and so then she had a lot of trauma and PTSD associated with this concussion and so trying to heal from the concussion and then she had a very significant knee injury that happened very shortly before Olympic tryouts no before the Olympics actually and yeah no before Olympic trials um so I mean but just really good very well done documentary. So good that actually, even if you care nothing about wrestling, it's still, it's good. It's still really good and worth watching. So Veda, I knew, would want to go to that. And so I took her and then a friend of hers who has been a wrestling friend since she was in kindergarten and he was in first grade. I took the two of them to this movie Thursday night, and it was really, really good. It's called Helen Believe, and like I said, produced by Chris Pratt. So if you're interested, look into that. There might be a way for you to view it. I don't actually know. I mean, it was only shown in some select theaters, but eventually it should be pretty widely accessible. But I really, really enjoyed it. It was very well done. It was inspirational. It was, it was good. It was very, very good. And that pretty much was spring break. Like I said, it was low key. It was quite lovely. Actually, it was really very, very nice. I also managed to get quite a bit of work done on my never ending knitting project, <laughs> which most of you probably don't remember, but I have a friend slash acquaintance whose mom had suddenly passed away a couple of years ago, and there was kind of this, there was a little bit of a miscommunication about the project and which yarn was going to be used and which project. <coughs> I'm sorry, with the windows open, that starts up my allergies, <laughs> but it's just too nice of a night. 
to not have the windows open. Um, anyway, in the end, I agreed to knit a blanket using this yarn that had been her mom's. And of course, you know, I want to do it. It's just, it's proven to be a very overwhelming task. And I've had to frog it twice. So that means I've had to rip it out, rip it, rip it, which is kind of like what a frog sounds. So that's why you say you frog it. So I've had to rip it out twice or frog it twice. Um, but it is coming along really, really well now. It's a good chunk of the way toward being completed at this point. I, I did end up getting quite a bit of work done on it that week. So that was good. I, I need to get it done. It's the project that's kind of totally ruined my knitting mojo. <laughs> I've had zero interest in knitting anything just because this particular project is such a chore. Um, and, and it's not like I love, I love what it is. I want to do this for her. You know, the meaning and the sentiment behind it is very significant to me. So it's, you know, I want to be able, I want to do a good job. It's just the knit itself is a little bit of agony, if that makes sense, I hope. You know, like the project, yes, I want to be able to do. It's just the actual thing that I'm working on is hard. So I really want to get that done. Um, and then last week, I kind of told you about a little bit. <laughs> um, so there are a couple of other big update type things that I'm trying to decide if I want to talk about those now or maybe maybe wait a little bit and I'll address those at another time. But there are some other updates, things that do kind of affect all of you, sort of. I mean, not like, not hugely, but information that I definitely want to pass on to you guys. But I think I'm going to wait at this point in time until I have a little bit more kind of hammered out. So, community question time. What is a good community question for tonight? What... What is one thing about spring? You know, what is what is one of the first signs for you that spring spring is here? Does that make sense? And obviously, I, I understand that some of you are not experiencing spring right now. <laughs> you are headed right into winter at present. And I know that. Um, so this maybe will give you hope and encouragement for past winter when you do get to spring. But what are, you know, a couple of the things that you most look forward to and you know, yes, we've made it to spring. And for me, because I talked about it, it's oh, the frogs. I love the frogs. Oh, <coughs> the spring peepers are the first ones that you hear. And then very, very shortly after they start, then we get the chorus frogs start making their noise. And chorus frogs kind of sound like they're clapping. Um, yeah, they kind of sound like they're clapping or like they're laughing, but like a puppet laugh. Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I can't. Just look up chorus frogs, I guess, maybe is your better bet. Um, and they are more active during the day you hear them a lot during the day but at night the peepers are just deafening around here and I love it I just love it it's like nature's music to me so for me I think that's probably my favorite thing that I most look forward to with spring is those peepers you know what I am laying down wrong colors left and right <laughs> right now <laughs> oh my word um I don't know about left and right. One of those is wrong. That much I know. Is it worth it for me to try and figure out which one? I think the one in the middle. I'm, yep, it was. It was the one in the middle, guys. Hey, look at that. Oh, sometimes I am brilliant. I wouldn't say brilliant. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll say that. 
Um, so yeah, so what is your favorite, like, initial sign that spring is here? Please share it in the comments below. And if you do not know, a community question is based off from part of the reason why I wanted to start a YouTube channel. And that was just getting to build a community, getting to know other people out there. And so part of how I can do that is by asking really simple, just getting to know you type questions and then encourage all of you to look at other people's replies as well and maybe make a new friend. <laughs> um, but that's that's a community question. So if you just leave that in the comments below, I would really, really appreciate it. So what else has been going on? All kinds of things. Guys, it's been two weeks. <laughs> so I'm going to launch into a story that it's a little bit, it's kind of a sensitive subject, but I wish it weren't such a sensitive subject. Um, I guess I'm just going to launch right into it and I can explain myself more when I'm done. So... In our house... You know, with each of the kids, starting from a very young age, we always talk about things like personal boundaries and everyone has, you know, private parts and who may and may not ever look at private parts and under what circumstances it's acceptable. You know, you know, the standard safety talk that everyone should be having. Not just one time, but multiple times over and over and over again with their young children. That's something that we've always done in this house. Um, last week, I got a phone call from the assistant principal at my son's school. And I answer it and he, he tells me that he, he has an incident happened at school. And I'm thinking, oh no, you know, what did my son do? He's, I mean, he's a sweet kid. He's a good kid, you know, but that's just my initial like what did my kid do is my kind of my reaction um my son did nothing actually I'm very proud of my son but what had happened the incident that the assistant principal was calling me about was my son had been in the bathroom he's first grade seven years old which in the United States first grade is actually your second official year of school um you have kindergarten first and then first grade. So it's his second real year of school. Um, and he was using the bathroom. And there was, I guess, another little boy at the urinal next to him. And while they were both going, this other little boy was reaching over and was lifting my son's shirt. Which then, of course, you know, exposed him. And my son was very bothered by this. Did not like it. And asked this other boy, you know, hey cut it out stop and this other boy apparently did not he did it a few more times he thought that it was funny and my son did not he was not listening to my son's requests to not do this to him and I, I do feel that it's really important to interject here that, you know, you're dealing with small children. And so six, seven year old kids, I mean, this is not about sex. This is a boy who he knows that this is not appropriate, but it's not, it's not a sexual assault. Okay. So, and I think it's really important to make that distinction. You're dealing with small children here. Well, my son, kudos to him. I'm so proud of him. When he was done, he did go and approach his teacher and explain what happened and thankfully the teacher listened to him took him seriously it was brought to the assistant principal they worked together they figured out who the other kid was and um after talking with both boys and everything they're able to piece together this story that this is what happened and the assistant principal too was really proud of my son for advocating for himself and therefore advocating on behalf of other kids that this may have happened to somebody else too and they didn't feel comfortable talking about it um, there were consequences for this little boy, but here too, I feel the need to step in and say, you know, I don't know this other little boy at all. I don't know the family he comes from, but the one thing that I always worry about, given what my husband does for a job, 
is, you know, what kind of things does this boy deal with at home that he would find this kind of behavior okay? And so my concern is actually not really for my son, who technically was the victim in this particular situation. And my son was very bothered by it. Um, my, my concern is actually greater for the other little boy. And so hopefully that is being looked into. Um, and if there are other things that need to be handled, hopefully they will be. But I share this story because even though we have talked about these personal boundary things at home regularly. When we talked to my son about it, when he got home from school and told him, you know, we are, we're very proud of you. Thank you for sticking up for yourself. You did the right thing. You went and you found a trusted adult. My son said, well, that's what they taught me. That's what the lady at school taught us to do. As when someone does something like that, you need to go to one of your trusted adults. Well, he was referring to a very early, essentially sex ed program that starts in first grade here, where they talk about things like personal boundaries and, you know, those those private parts and that kind of thing. And a lot of it is talking about how to stand up for yourself, saying no, where to turn to if you do need help. And they have to write out a list of, you know, five people, trusted adults, people that they know and love and are there to protect them. And that is what my son thought of and remembered. Even though we talk about it at home all the time, it was the lesson that he got at school that let him know what to do. And I bring that up because I'm not here to like say one way or the other, how sex ed should be taught or shouldn't be taught in schools. But I will say that in this case, in this instance, it was a good thing for my kid. And so I just kind of wanted to share that and let you know that schools do do really good, important work. <laughs> and I just feel like we are forgetting that a lot lately Teachers and schools are coming under a lot of attack. And yet, here is one very clear example where because they addressed issues of, of morals and <laughs> personal safety, my son knew what to do and he got help. Uh, kind of sweet the next morning when he was getting ready for school. He was in the bathroom and he was self-talking in the mirror going over about you know so if this happens I can go find so-and-so and or talk to so-and-so and then I had told him too you know and if you had talked with your teacher and if she had not listened to you um you know keep trying go to another trusted adult or try and talk to your teacher again you know keep trying to advocate until somebody does listen and so he was kind of going over all of that the next morning when he was in the bathroom <laughs> really 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 sweet so that's my kind of like heavy story but I don't mean it to be heavy I mean it more to be actually really encouraging and <clears throat> as an appreciation for what our public schools do have to deal with and the difficult lessons and things that they do have to address with children and why it's so so important um, more about that sweet child of mine. Ugh. So if you listen to my last whip and chat, it was kind of a downer. Um, at least part of it was kind of a downer. It was just talking more about my own feelings of personal inadequacy. Um, uh, kind of standard stuff, but I, w I was very open and honest in that particular episode. Um, but that very same day, actually, when I took my son to dance class, he asked if he could play games on my phone. He had eaten his dinner, which we did get the Little Caesars that night, in case you were wondering. And then he had a little bit of time left, so he asked if he could play games on my phone. Because he has a few of his items on my phone. And I said, yeah, that's fine. I had a book that I was reading. Well, there is an app that I think it's a Sago Mini. 
but it is so what it is is you can record yourself oh i think i put down the wrong drill again um like you open it up and it will show a picture of it's like a simple outline of a tree and then the ground and it will say what do you see when you look outside and then the child is supposed to draw a picture with their finger like i see a cat in the sun and it records what they're drawing. Like you don't see their hand or anything. You just see what they end up creating on the screen. And it also records their voice so they can talk through what they're working on. Well, my son loves doing this and he considers that like his YouTube channel, which is already super duper cute. Uh, <laughs> so I had been having this really like deep moment on my own YouTube channel earlier that day and really struggling with just feelings of being a total utter failure blah 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 you can go and listen to that whip and chat if you want and then you'll understand more what I'm talking about and then I listened to my son working on his YouTube channel and he gets to the end and he uses my outro um I actually think that I can figure out a way to cut it, slice it, and I will actually stick that in here, right here for you guys. What's in the cart? And then there's Legos. That has 300 pieces. And I'm completely done. Goodbye. And I hope you're having a nice day. Always practice your niceness. You're not going to let someone's going through. So, just practice. So, there you go. He essentially uses my outro. I mean, he has it a little bit different. But to hear him share that, it almost made me cry. It just was like an encouragement and a reminder. Okay, okay, I'm doing... I'm doing something right. You know, the fact that my kid wants to imitate me and wants to, is aware of how important this message is. You know, I, I don't know. It just really, it was so sweet. And it's exactly what I needed at that point in time. <laughs> so in case you want to know more about, you know, Mr. Havelock's YouTube uh, I'll try and keep an eye out, and if anything else really awesome comes across on his channel, I'll let you know about it. <laughs> um, so that was just really, really sweet and kind of cool. Oh, uh, what else? Well, two, well, no. One of the girls has her first track meet for the season tomorrow. So I only have two girls doing track, numbers one and three. But daughter number three, Evie is not competing tomorrow. I guess she's going to compete next week for the first time. She's only sixth grade. It's her very first year doing track, but she's also doing volleyball. So I give her a lot of credit. She's really pushing herself. She really wants to learn how to pole vault. Um, but I guess tomorrow she just didn't feel that's, I can't use that one. That's just way too busted up. Um, but tomorrow she just wasn't really feeling ready yet. And, um, the coach said, you know, that's fine. And, so I guess next week she will compete. So my eighth grade daughter, Sylvia, has her first track meet for tomorrow. And she's so excited. Guys, I am so proud of her. She is very confident this year. She is working hard. And I hope that it all pays off for her. She wants to master hurdles. She's do always done hurdles. She does have a natural knack for it. Like, my youngest was saying she can't even clear a hurdle. Like, <laughs> she she can't do it. No, She's like, no matter what I do, I can't even get over a hurdle. <laughs> a single one. So, and, and Sylvia's done hurdles ever since sixth grade. It's just kind of been natural for her. And this year, she decided that she was... She was going to conquer them. She was going to get this right. She was going to get it figured out. And she was going to do well on hurdles. So I know she has been practicing hard. And I hope, I hope so, so much that she can see just 
how much that practice has done for her. That would be so huge for her. So awesome. So I'm excited about that for tomorrow. Oh. Let's see, volleyball, the first volleyball game isn't for until next week, Saturday. So I have a little bit of time before that one picks up. Veda decided she didn't want to do track. I was really, I was disappointed. I'm trying to not be as disappointed, but I, I was kind of disappointed. You know, all three of my girls out there, I was all excited about it. You know, I had visions of walking down the track together. I was so excited. And guys, it didn't happen. <laughs> But then I need to step back and realize it's not my life. I cannot dictate what my children do. The only disappointing thing is I had wanted Veda to do some kind of a sport this year. And she neglected to sign up for cross country in time, which she did cross country last year. And then she refused to do track this year. So that is the more legitimate side to my disappointment um, is that she didn't actually participate in a sport for herself. So we talked about it. She has promised that she will be back on board next year. You know, she will be doing cross country again. And this year for cross country was a little weird. They didn't actually find a middle school coach. So it wasn't, the information wasn't passed around real well. It turns out that it was the high school coach who also did the middle school kids. So in the end, there were only a small handful, maybe five or six middle schoolers who ended up doing cross country. But next year, even if he ends up coaching both, um, now we know ahead of time and it, it should be different. So hopefully she will stay true and she will join that next year. All right. So books. Do you remember last time I was telling you about the books that I'd finished reading? Oh, guys, I've been reading some good ones lately. So remember I started talking about Humble Pie, which is a book all about when math goes wrong in the real world. All right, well, I am going to get up in my soapbox for a minute. I know, I know. You're like, what? And it's for sanity on a soapbox? Like, we've never heard that before. She just totally educated us on rabies vaccinations and why everyone needs to vaccinate their dogs, which I completely stand by. So make sure that your dog's rabies vaccination is up to date, please. All right. Well, let's talk daylight savings for a minute, okay? All right. Maybe, maybe you're one of the few, few lucky ones on this planet. And you live in an area that you don't have to deal with daylight savings. Where every fall, you set your clocks back and you go back to natural time. Nobody minds that so much. You get an extra hour on a Sunday morning. You know, that's not so bad. Except then, it's dark. Really early. Like, beastly early. Depending on where you live, it can be dark by like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So you go through winter like that. Then you get to spring. And now you do the opposite. And you have to set your clocks back. Well, not back, but forward an hour. So now you lose an hour. So now Sunday morning is chaotic and crazy. And now you've lost an entire hour of your life. And you, you know, you can't sleep in. And it's 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 awful. But the trade-off is it's light later which is glorious. I love it. Just love it. All right. So the debate has been going on forever and ever and ever about, do we really need to do daylight savings? Is this really necessary? And I mean, there are all kinds of crazy claims about, well, but with, you know, you have to, you know, kids can't wait in the dark for the school bus. I don't know what they're talking about with that one. My kids wait in the dark every, most days of the school year, my kids wait in the dark for the school bus, okay? <laughs> I did it as a kid. I walked a good half mile down the road in the dark to go wait for a school bus. This is just what happens. So that argument always gets me because it doesn't make any sense. But then the one that he talks about in Humble Pie. 
And the one that I thought, okay, maybe there's like a little bit of a legitimate claim here. Turns out it's bogus. You're only getting a teeny tiny little part of the story. All right, are you ready to have your minds blown? All right, are you ready? Because I'm going to share it now. I've stopped diamond painting. This is serious, okay? This is serious. All right, so people always like to claim that daylight saving, so when you leap forward, it is bad for our health. I'm sure you've heard this, okay? And what do they always say? They say more people have heart attacks or suffer strokes when we do daylight savings, when we move forward an hour. Versus fewer people have heart attacks when we go back to our natural time or when we, you know, go back an hour, which is the way that it's supposed to be. That's our natural clock. <coughs> and so they like to make this argument that daylight savings is bad for our health. And therefore, we definitely, if we should just choose to stick with one, we definitely should not choose the spring summer clock because we are all going to die from heart disease and strokes and, and I don't know it all. All right. Here is the full story. Thanks to the guy who wrote Humble Pie, whose name I cannot remember. But you know what? I'll, I'll put it in my notes below. Go check it out. It's a great book. Fun read. Funny too. Informational, funny, excellent book. What they don't share with you is that, yes, that initial 24 hours after we change the clock in the fall, when we go back an hour, fewer people end up having heart attacks. In the spring, when we move our clocks forward an hour, there is an increase in heart attacks in the next 24 hours. But what they don't tell you is when you look at the full week following time change, so the full seven days following time change, there is no statistical change in numbers. None. Same number of people who would be predicted to have a heart attack still do. So why is this? Well, when you get thinking about it, it's not hard to figure it out. In the fall, when you get an extra hour, you get an extra hour of sleep. You have an extra hour to relax. So even though you're destined to have a heart attack within the next week, you get maybe an extra 24 hours before it happens, right? Versus in the spring, when you get anxious because you know you're losing an hour and you do lose an hour of sleep and you're now fumbling around an hour earlier to get where you need to go. That's added stress. So maybe you would have had a heart attack on Wednesday that week, but now instead you end up having it Sunday night. Do you see this connection here? But in the end, when you look at total numbers for the week, there is no change. None. Zero. Zilch. And this is according to a very thorough study that was done from the University of Michigan, where they go so far as to even account for the fact that you lose one hour in the fall, you gain an extra hour in the spring. Therefore, you know, when you get down to minutes and you're looking for exact numbers, like they figure this was very, very thorough and complete. And so, this author was saying that it drives him nuts because every time we come back around to this falling back or springing forward, you always hear all of these people talking about why are we still doing this? Why can't we just pick one time? People tend to prefer the um, spring forward time. Um, and then uh, people always come back with all of these medical arguments. And he's like, it drives me nuts because it's not accurate. It's not accurate. They're, they're cherry picking the data. And it's, it's, he said, I might end up dying from a heart attack due to time change because I get so stressed out over the inappropriate use of data <laughs> to try and prove a point here. So there you go. That is my new soapbox thing. Vaccinate your pets against rabies, specifically your dogs, because it is, it is a virus that is made for canines. Well, the 
like biggest strain of it. There, I won't go into that. And, and if you can, write your legislators about daylight savings. And if you enjoy flipping the clock two times every year, good for you. That, I mean, fine. Then you can just be happy that we still do that. But if you don't, and you'd like to see a change, write your legislators and let them know that according to the University of Michigan and their very thorough study, there is no permanent, long-lasting ill effects to health if we spring forward or advantages if we, if we remain falling back. So there you go. Frankly, I'm at the point where... I don't care which one we pick. Can we just pick one and stick with it? I hate changing the clock two times a year. My husband never changes the clock in his car and it drives me nuts. It's not even hard to do. He just, it's all like digital. You just push the button on the screen and you change. It's not hard to do, but he still refuses to do it. He has it ingrained in his brain, apparently, that it must be impossible to do. So I'm just not going to do it because blah, blah. I don't know. But it drives me nuts. If you can't tell, it drives me nuts. So then I get in his car and then I fix his clock. And it's good for a few months until then, of course, the time change. Anyway, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, guys. I promise. My rant is over. And uh, that's even without PMS. Whew, aren't you lucky you didn't have me last week. Count your blessings. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for now. There is, I got a whole list of stuff sitting over here that I do need to try and eventually talk about, um, but not tonight. I have talked about more than enough. If you are still here, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, just as a reminder, if you would please like this video, I'd really appreciate it. Leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't. All these things mean so much to small YouTube content creators like me and others. It's not just about me here. Um, so if you would please do that, I would really, really appreciate it. And definitely answer that community question. What is your favorite like first sign of spring? Let me know in the comments below and read what some other people have to write too. Otherwise, like I always say, please practice kindness. You never know what someone is going through and you don't know their situation. You don't know their life circumstance. So just be kind. And I hope that in return, you are shown that same level of kindness. And I hope that you are having an absolutely wonderful day. And I will see you again real soon.